Welcome everybody on a live broadcast. This is your host Adnan Maksud all the way from New York. Excited to come on this broadcast and uh, I believe many people will be blessed tonight and if if that's your first time please type your name right below this broadcast. I would love to acknowledge you and uh please give me a favor share this broadcast on your Facebook timeline invite somebody brand new somebody that you think that will benefit from this conversation because my guest got a very powerful testimony and we're going to hear that testimony and i believe many out there that who need to hear this prophetic word that will be awesome that will be amazing that word is very timely word so i want you to please take a moment share this broadcast on your facebook timeline invite somebody brand new tag somebody name right below this broadcast and share 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 on your facebook timeline and uh, platform so it's going to be awesome incredible powerful night tonight because my guest is she bears many hats she is a, a preacher teacher speaker a uh, conference speaker and uh she is a writer so she wears so many hats and she is a home mother so that's the challenge so she uh, uh, come, overcome over many things and uh, uh you know no matter what devils throw at her she uh, has responded in vic victory so i believe tonight is it's a victory time so i believe many of you that who will be watching and listening you're going to be blessed by this broadcast so here i'm going to bring her on one and only old way <laughs> from Alabama, my special guest, Andrea, with, on, uh, with us on this broadcast. So, Andrea, please take a moment and the second time introduce yourself. <laughs> well, let me say thank you for being patient uh, while we figure all of this out. And um, thank you for inviting me tonight just to hang out and, and share what God's been doing in my life. Um, I have um, already shared this once, but we're going to do it again because we know. Again. Yeah, well, and we know, we know, right? We are more than conquerors in Christ, and, and the enemy's yeah. uh, he's coming to kill, steal, and destroy. So we know yeah. that's his plan, but we know what God's plan is. And so praise the Lord. We are going to share this again and get it out, and whoever is watching now must need to hear it. Um, but like yeah. um, I then said, I'm Andrea Kellum. I am the founder of Changing Crowns Ministries, and I do wear many hats. And it's funny that you said that because, you know, uh, recently— um, all of my girls and I, we've all started saying we're going to stop saying we wear hats and we wear crowns because that's our 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 ministry anyway is um, talking about changing crowns. But just a little background: um, I wasn't, I haven't always been in ministry. I, I haven't, I didn't grow up in uh, ministry. I was a pageant coach and I taught women uh, how to interview and walk on stage and answer the on stage questions and do hair and makeup and all that fun stuff. And I was very passionate about it. I loved being able to share Jesus in that and pray with the girls that I coached. And um, I called all of my clients. No, they were my girls. That's what I called them, my girls. And uh, I took them in like daughters, some of them, depending on their ages. And then I had some who were um, like mothers to me. They were all the way up to age 65. And about Come three on. or four years ago, the Lord just stirred up in my heart, um, just a new desire to seek after him. And I had given my life to Christ when I was 20 years old, um, but I had never, what I would say, went all in for Christ. Um, you know, I, my life was not, um, I wasn't living worldly anymore. I had been changed. I had received the Holy Spirit. I was doing what I knew to be doing, and um, I just wasn't walking fully and worthy of my calling. Come on. And didn't really recognize what that was. And so um, when the when the Lord started really sending um, this new desire, I was losing my desire for pageantry, but I wanted to soak his word up. And simultaneously, um, I actually started going through some really severe health issues. And there were things that the doctors just kind of were boggled by. Nobody could tell me what was wrong with me. I spent so many days and so many hours and so much money trying to figure out what is going on with my body. Um, I was just having really weird symptoms. The doctors would think it was one thing and they'd do a test and the test would come back and say, no, it's not that. And, you know, so it was just, it was a rough time and I got really depressed. I got really, really sad. Um, I was, like I said, wearing many crowns. Yes. Still, you know, um, I still had my pageant business going. I had started with a new company um, on the side. I was homeschooling our son. And then dealing with all of these uh, health problems. And it was just, it was a big struggle. And I remember specifically um, that I was sitting on the sofa one day and I looked down and I had a purple Bible. Um, purple's my favorite color and you didn't even I'm know awesome. it. You wore it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> and so, 
yeah and so i'm sitting on the sofa and i see my purple bible in front of me and and you know i was just in this place where i would just cry like i couldn't explain why i was even crying um it was just i was just full of emotions and just overcome with anxiety and fear and um i i really was at my breaking point i was like god i can't do this anymore i just you've got to change something i don't know what else to do and i looked down and i saw my bible and it was like the lord was saying just pick it up and read it and you know i, I read my bible but um, this was different for me. I picked it up and I was like, I don't even know where to go. And so I was like, I'm just going to open it to the new Testament and read the first red letters that I see. Cause I knew the red letters were what Jesus spoke. And so I opened the Bible up and the very first thing that I saw was daughter, your faith has made you well. Come on. And it was the story of the woman with the blood disorder. And I wept like I squalled like a baby. <laughs> wow. um, it was, I was so overwhelmed with just God's grace and love in that moment. I literally felt like I, I really thought I was going to look over and see Jesus sitting beside me physically <laughs> because yeah. it was like that powerful of a moment for me that I felt like all of these nights that I had gone to sleep and, and over and over quoted second Timothy one seven, that God did not give me a spirit of fearfulness, but one of power and love and sound mind. It was like all of that um, finally came to this culmination of Jesus showing me my faith had made me well. Like here wow. is like, I'm still walking with him. I'm still being faithful. I knew in the beginning of my health journey that he was showing me, he was going to use it. There would be a purpose in it. I had no idea what that even was. Um, so let me ask you, yeah. Andrea, you started your uh, ministry 2017. Uh, yeah. And, uh, but before that, were you, uh, like born again Christian? Yes. Did you? Yeah, for thirteen years. <laughs> for thirteen years, born again because uh, you know you started. You said you were called and you sold out your pageant business, and you said you know God is All calling in. you. Yeah. So, uh, so, so how did you hear the? Uh, uh, did you feel the calling? Did you had a supernatural encounter with God, or how did you discover that you were called? I think this moment that I picked up the Bible and I saw that big. Began that process of healing for me to recognize um, some things that I had carried and was broken by um, just some hurts, the fears, the things that I, I can look back now and, and go, I know that was the enemy working so hard to stop what God was about to mm -hmm. grow. And, um, and so I think that moment was probably at the time I didn't realize that was the moment that started it. I do now. Um, but what started when I recognized, okay, God's doing something powerful through my faith, through, you know, my willingness, um, I knew in that moment was I finally, I just, I kept feeling like um, I needed to share with other people what God was doing with me. I just kept, ha I had this urge. It was like the more I read, um, the more of his word that was was being poured into my spirit, into my heart. I wanted it was like it was like it wanted to just burst out of me. You know, I just I wanted to just like, yeah. And so I don't know that there was at the time that it was happening. I don't know that there was like an actual moment that I recognized it was happening. Other than that, it was just a every day. It was I was overcome with emotion. I'm a crybaby. <laughs> so, you know, it was just like I was just tearful constantly. Um, and now I can look back though and see that that was the Holy Spirit healing me from hurts wow. in the past and things that had broken me, people who had broken me, people who had hurt me. Um, I was able to walk through a process of um, forgiving someone who had sexually abused me. I was going through a process of forgiving myself for having suicidal thoughts as a teenager. You know, it was all of those things that I, even though I was of Christ and in Christ, I did not heal from those things. I tucks them away, you know? And so in, in the process of going to ministry, I felt like that was the healing, the tears just Come on. go ahead. So I want to, um, you, you said something very profound, you know, can it be a possible person is saved, have Jesus in their life still broken? I think so. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think that it's when we receive Jesus in the Holy spirit, um, I don't think that we always are going to see, and it's not an instant thing. Um, sometimes we see instant healing. Sometimes we see instant um, miracles, yeah. but it isn't always that everything in our life is instantly um, restored. And mm -hmm. I think for me, I know in my walk with Christ, that's the walk 
um, where I started to see, okay, this is really what all in for Jesus means is that, you know, I'm able to give him these broken things that I thought I was hiding from him that I thought, you know, I had dealt with that I thought I had given to him. But I think it's a constant because, you know, we live in a sinful world. We live in in, in this world that um, it's broken and it's going to break us constantly. And, you know, it's funny you even said that because that's actually the title of my next book is Beautifully Broken. Um, and that's what I talk about in that book. Um, but backing up to the Coffee and Jesus group beginning, I really one night I was laying in the bed and I just I, I had fought the Lord with this urge that I felt to I just felt compelled to want to share it with other women. And Come on. I'm not I'm not a teacher of the Bible before this, you know, like I, didn't, yes. I have no degree. I have no you know, I didn't have anything um, that by man's eyes would qualify me to teach God's word. I just knew that the, the Holy Spirit was putting this desire in my heart to want to share what he was doing with me and encourage women. And so I was laying on my belly at night. 1030, August 31st, 2017, Jeremy didn't even know my husband. He was laying beside me and it was yeah. like, make the group. And so I made a Facebook group called wow. Coffee and Jesus. Um, I started with 20 women. God has now taken it and it and it happened overnight almost. But God has now taken it to 4,100 women in 47 countries. Wow. That that is yeah. uh, that is must be God, because, you know, uh, people can start with their own will, with their own determination but as yeah. long as you don't have god in it uh people fail people perish yes. people walk away people uh, i think so enthusiasm loses over time but when yeah. you have christ in it when you have the purpose of god in you then you're ready to jump over hoops or any hurdles that coming in your way you know or trouble and trilations you know paul uh he faces so many problems as you know <laughs> And he was like, the moment he's, he said, it is honor for me to, I'm paraphrasing. He said, it is honor for me to suffer for Christ, you know? And I I have the, uh, the, the, the wounds of Christ over my body. I carry his wounds over my body. So this is so passionate. Uh, often we, uh, you know, underestimate our calling and, um, and don't know, you know, where to go or who to connect with. But God, actually, you started with 20 women, and you said, and now it's in 47 countries. That is magnificent. It's That's crazy. Yes. It is crazy. And how did you come up with the name Coffee and Jesus? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I knew that it was something that, and it's funny because I'm a night owl. Like this late night show, this is so me. <laughs> yeah. I can talk all night long. Um, I'm not a morning person. And it's funny because coffee and Jesus is actually morning devotions. And so yeah. um, that's where I guess where the coffee came from. And it's also funny because I didn't actually like coffee until my son started. He went to public school for a few years and um, yeah. I didn't start drinking coffee until he started kindergarten in our public school system. And yes. uh, I would stop by my mom's every morning and drink a cup of coffee with her because I would just be like, you know, crying like a baby that my baby wasn't with me. <laughs> That's, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was I don't know. It was just one of those things that I feel like, again, was just completely the Holy Spirit's decision. And I just obeyed. And if I could say anything to anyone watching right now who they already know Christ, but they just don't know what is what do you want me to do? Um, our groups. Uh, life verse for the coffee and Jesus group is Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Those two verses um, tell us Christ is telling the disciples and the same call is for us uh, to go and in, into the world and, and to make disciples and not just to make disciples, but to teach them everything that he had commanded them. And then he leaves the promise at the end that I'm with you always. Amen. And, well, let me ask you, sorry to cut you. So no, go ahead. Um, I want to ask, um, you have written books, The uh, Warrior Woman, mm -hmm. Coffee and Jesus, of course, and Beautifully <laughs> Broken. So um, real quick, I want to ask, um, go through each book. How did you come up with the name? Uh, and um, give us a little summary of the book and how people can get the book. Is that available on Amazon as well? Yes. Okay. So they, yeah, they can get it at Amazon, but they can also go to changingcrowns.com um, and we have them all available. The, the Beautifully Broken book is pre-order um, right now. Um, it's not been completely released yet, but um, they can actually do it through donation only. Um, they can purchase it through Amazon. It's available on Kindle also. Um, but the Warrior Women book was the first book that I wrote. And about um, two days after I started the Coffee and Jesus group, 
I felt like the Holy Spirit just flooded my mind with words. It wasn't mm -hmm. sentences. It was just one word at a time, two words at a time. And wow. I would make a note in my phone. And so um, the second lesson, the day after the second lesson that afternoon, I was actually folding clothes. See, I'm just a real mom. <laughs> um, I was just folding clothes and warrior women came to my mind. I was listening to some Bible studies and, you know, I'd been listening to worship music and the, and this two words warrior women came to mind. So I got my phone and I really quickly typed them out and immediately just these thoughts began to pour um, onto my note in front of me of, you know, what it meant to be a warrior woman and what what does God mean by this? So warrior women um, prepare for battle is the first book that I wrote. And it's actually uh, a Bible study and my testimony walking through my health journey. But my it's the Bible study of uh, Ephesians six of God's armor. And it's me getting to walk through learning how to equip myself with God's armor and to prepare for battle in what I was dealing with at the time, my health journey. But at, um, at any point, you know, a woman can use that for anything. Um, God's armor is super important for us, especially for women. I find that uh, the helmet of salvation, that's one of the biggest things, you know, that we can if we can just put that helmet on and recognize in the spiritual sense um, where a helmet protects the brain physically of a soldier that that spiritually it protects us um, mentally wow. from the enemy's attacks. And then Coffee and Jesus is a compilation of our first written devotions in the group. And then Beautifully Broken actually is a testimony of little things that have happened through my life where um, hurts from other people, my own shame and guilt, things that I have been broken by and just letting God use those broken pieces to bring back um a vessel to put it back together um, of me just being that vessel that's willing to be used. And, you know, I find when we allow him to piece those broken pieces back together, um, there's still cracks there, for, but the cracks are there for the Holy Spirit to shine through. And and that is um, back to your original question, you know, why I say, yes, we can still be in Christ and still have brokenness in our lives. Um, the key is that being in Christ, recognizing those moments when we are broken and then going back to his word, going back to him and allowing him to correct those things and fix those things. Come on. That, that is really fantastic. And uh, I will encourage guys who can go on uh, changing the crowns, right? Changing crowns, changing right? Crowns. Uh -huh. Changing, changing crowns. crowns. How did you come up with the changing crowns and what's the secret behind changing crowns? Are you <laughs> Everyone asked that. I just giggle because everyone asked me that. Um, it was actually my pageant business name. It was Changing Crowns Productions. And yeah. so um, I, I changed my business name about six years before I moved from pageantry to ministry. And I changed it because I wanted my pageant business not to just be about um, the beauty and the vain, you know, the vanity that can be in the beauty industry. I wanted it to be a place where girls recognize like we're not just seeking earthly crowns here. Like we're, we're looking for crowns, um, heavenly crowns that glorify Christ and that we can give back to him. And um, so it was just perfect to move transition from that. Once I closed my pageant business to ministry. So that's our, our, our hope is that we teach women to stop looking at the earthly things, the earthly crowns and start seeking after heavenly wow. crowns. Wow. Praise the Lord. It is a time yeah. for you to be there. Heavenly crown, not just a heavenly crown, but this helmet of salvation, as Andrea yes. said in her uh, previous conversation. So I want you to guys go on. Um, if you want to know more about Andrea, who is she and what she does, she is a busy woman. I'm <laughs> busy with a uh, husband, children, studies, and all these things. She's a homeschool mom, and uh, she also a host on a life, a Woman Life Network, right? Is that correct? It's Life Network for Women. Yes, please go download the app. It's brand new. It's awesome. There's tons of ladies on there encouraging. It's really great. That is good. So you do a show, and you're a host, and you're doing so much. How do you keep up with every single thing? You know, coming on your plate, you, you're accepting invitation. You're not overwhelmed. What's keeping you going <laughs> um i am overwhelmed sometimes <laughs> is that a coffee keeping you going or what or coffee, yes definitely coffee um jeremy jeremy my husband he is um, a 
super supporter. Um, if if I didn't have Kanan, our son, and Jeremy supporting me, I'm telling you, I wouldn't make it through because even I'm in the bathroom doing my hair and makeup, trying to get ready to come on live with you. And I'm like, hey, can you grab my book? Hey, can you fix the light? Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, definitely the two of them. And honestly, I laugh all the time. I say I run on Jesus juice. I run on the Holy Spirit because... I can't keep up with me, much less expect anyone else to. Um, but I will say this. I've had to learn, and I'm still in that process of learning. We're ever learning in Christ. Um, don't ever become unteachable. But I have really had to learn that it's okay for me to say no, that I need to make sure that the things that I accept are Holy Spirit led. You know, because every door that opens up is not a yes. Every yeah. door that is, you know, presented before me is not something I need to walk through. Um, and then also, it's not so easy for me. Jeremy's going to, I'm going to say this and Jeremy's going to laugh in the background. <laughs> but, um, but really trying to, trying my best. And I say trying because it's hard for me to set aside time that I just go, I have to breathe like, you know, like and and actually just this week, something that an idea that I had that I shared with him is I think um, I'm going to start trying to do sabbatical weeks where I just go, you know, six weeks of I can go and then seven week, seventh week. I'm just going to like shut life down like I am not existent to anyone outside of my home. <laughs> oh and, you know, I think it's important that we take time to rest um, the Lord rest in it, and it's you yeah. know, it's there for a reason. That is good. So uh, when is your book, uh, Beautiful Broken, is coming up? And uh, what should people expect from this book? So we're hoping to release um, in the winter. You know, I'm, I'm waiting for the Lord to give me the right time. That book has actually been um, in the process, ready to be released. It was going to be released uh, December last year. Mm -hmm. Three days prior to that, um, one of the stories that's in the book, one of my personal testimonies, um, an entire change came about with that story. And I knew that releasing the book at the time would have affected um, some people in my life in a negative way. And I did not want that to happen. Um, I want the book to be about healing. And so since then, I've Jeremy and I have had a restoration of a friendship through that process. Uh, so we have some things that I know that the Lord will allow me to speak about in, in time. Um, so we're just waiting really on him. But our our projected date, I can make all the plans I want, right? But the Lord's plans will prevail. <laughs> so uh, our projected date will be December of this year. Um, you know, should the Lord halt that, then, you know, we'll obviously let everyone know. But but in that book, it's just a series of testimonies that of things that I went through, um, how I was able to allow the Lord to heal my heart, um, to give forgiveness towards um, uh, a friend of mine. Whenever I was a teenager, um, her uncle, I had a, a sexual abuse encounter with her uncle. And so I went through that process of healing, of never getting to say to that person even um, you know, that I would had forgiven them, but um, I did get to go through forgiveness with the Lord. And um, there's things in my past of, you know, shamefulness of being a teenager, partying and going crazy and just, you know, doing things before I knew. Yeah. Christ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, those things you don't want anybody to know. And then I go, but hey, Jesus forgave me for that. Um, you know, and so it's just, it's stories like that in my life. It's those, um, what I call tiny testimonies. It may not be that full story for me, but it's those little tiny testimonies that I, I think speak to so many people. Um, and I think that's a good point, too, to make before we end here is that we don't have to have this big, impactful thing that we look at and go, OK, I've overcome addiction or I went through this really traumatic abuse and the Lord healed me from it. Or I had this really incurable disease and the Lord healed me. Those are testimonies and we do see those things. But I think that it's um, easy for us to feel like we're not important or feel like we're unworthy because, you know, there are people who have powerful testimonies that don't have just that one thing that Christ did for them. You know, it's not just that one. Um, it's not a, just a one summary type thing. And so I think it's important that we see Christ in, in those little tiny testimonies of our life and find those one on one places where he needs us to share them. That is great, Andrea. So somebody who is broken right now and uh, 
uh, and and or probably what you went through, probably they went to a similar situation. Uh, not to spoil the book, but um, how can <laughs> people uh, recover from it? How did you overcome? I know you said so many words, and but in simple word, what would you say? How to overcome a challenge? How to put a past behind and move on? Uh, focus on the future. Go to God's word to Matthew eleven. Um, 28 through 30. He says, come to me all who are weary and I will give you rest. Um, but then he says towards the end of that, it, he says, take my yoke upon you. Um, Amen. For, for my, uh, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And if you don't know what that is, it's um, this heavy harness that they would put onto an ox yeah. and then they would have to carry the heavy weight. And so what I like to refer to, because a lot of people don't grasp that, you know, you have to kind of study yeah. and figure out like, what's that even mean? What's yeah. the yoke? Um, I'm from Pakistan. I, I know you're <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> But you know, in America, we don't see that. And so um, not unless, well, maybe if you're from the South on the farm or something, but, but, you know, yes. I think in simple terms in a, in a modern way, I like to explain it to women like this. It's like carrying around a weighted blanket. Yes. And it's super heavy and you're worn down and you really just need somebody to take it. And Jesus has this really soft, beautiful satin sheet. And he's like saying, Hey, I'll trade you. Yeah. Give me your heavy weighted blanket. You take the satin sheet. And so go to God's word. The simplicity of it is if you are broken, go to God's word and ask him for a rhema, that specific word, that, that spoken word that you can cling to and whatever it is and and stay there with him until you have healing from it. And sometimes healing takes years. Amen. Yes, I agree with that. Sometimes healing takes years, but over time, uh, it it it's... It begins to go away, you know. Over time, it heals. Uh, it's it's like a wound on your body. When when you get it, when it's a fresh wound, it's bleeding, and and sometimes it, it looks ugly. But over time, you know, it, it's heals, and you know, yes. and and I believe, you know, if you come into the presence of God, no matter what you've been through, uh, God will bring healing in your life. Because often people uh, procrastinate to come into the presence of God and think that. Uh, oh, it, it's it's impossible. My healing is it, not going to come, or my wound is too deep, and um, it, it's to the bone, and uh, and and I'm broken into pieces, in million pieces. I cannot be put together. But I tell you that your architecture is not an architecture doctor or nurse or or physician, but your doctor is God, and He created Amen. you. And he, when he created you, he had you in his mind. And there is no piece that's so messed up he cannot repair and put it together. But you have to trust the process because often people want overnight. There is nothing overnight. It's, it's all lies. There is no such a thing. It's a myth, overnight success, and overnight healing, and overnight this and that. God can do it. But sometimes we have to go through the process to discover our purpose because in our process, there is a purpose. And I want you to get it uh, right deep inside of your spirit that there is a purpose that God has for you. And as Andrea spoke beautifully and as she written a book, Beautifully Broken, I want you to uh, encourage you to pre-order it, get it, and, and learn how to, how to heal, how to recover, and how you can overcome your daily challenge, how you can give your life over to Jesus and leave the result on God and do your part each and every day so i'm uh, very uh, thrilled and excited to uh, you know have you andrea on this broadcast and i believe uh, you are that piece you know that god is going to masterpiece that god is going to continue to use to heal women and 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 broken pieces that of women's put together because there is a certain voice you know there is a certain spirit that you connected with people that god has it uh, over people so th when, when you you're only the person that they're going to hear the voice and you know they're going to be healed because no matter how much knowledge and how much wisdom people have but the, until that god has dedicated the very particular person like uh paul going into rome and and right. you know setting captain free and and bringing the gospel of jesus christ so it is very profound so thank you so much andrea for sharing before you leave, I want you to pray for people. Pray for yeah. healing, deliverance, breakthrough. Pray for people who are broken right now and they feel like it's impossible to put together. Uh, let, let's pray over them. Let's speak the love of Jesus. Let's, pray, let's speak encouragement, motivational, 
here over to you, Andrea. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just invite you into this moment. Um, Lord, I just pray that whoever is listening, whoever is watching, whoever hears my voice, God, that whatever it is that they need, we just ask Holy Spirit that you would just come into their lives, into their heart, into their homes, into their careers, wherever it is that they need you to meet them, Lord, that you would just meet them right where they are. Lord, help them to see that their brokenness, their past, their hurts, their, their hatred, their anger, their frustrations, all of those things can be removed completely if they just keep focused on you. Lord, we pray right now that you would just bring healing and deliverance and breakthroughs and in all areas of our lives, God, that we can see um, you working and God help us to not forget that you are a God of detail and help us to not forget to, to, to look for you in those tiny things because we know you're a big God. We know you're a mighty God. We know you're the almighty, but we sometimes forget that you work in the details and the in intricacies and the, and the tiniest things that you can, you can work and, and um, place together and knit together things that we can't possibly imagine. God, help us to not need to focus on just the big picture, but help us to be able to see those little things. And Father, I just pray right now that whoever is listening, whoever is under under my voice, whoever is watching this, Lord, that they would just receive healing in whatever way it is that you need them to have. God, help them to see um, that it may not be instant. It may not be ex overnight, that it may have to take years but God, help us all to, to recognize that we can just come to you with our burdens and our brokenness and that you say that when we come to you, you give us rest and replace and replace all of the hate and the hurt in our hearts. Father, I thank you for your for your love. I thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for the redemption, uh, redemption and the blood that he shed that um, by his wounds we are healed and we know that. And we just thank you, Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just engulf those that are listening in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Andrea, for coming You're on welcome. this podcast. And uh, let this word that she's spoken over your life, let it be in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to guide you, lead you, direct you, protect you. And I also pray for my dear sister, Andrea, and her husband, Jeremy, and son, Kenan. God, in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, bless them. Pave the path where the path is not uh, paved yet and some bumpy roads. God, you pave the path for them and you lead them, direct them, protect them, show them what you're going to do next in their life. In Jesus' mighty name, Holy Spirit, whisper to their ears so they can hear the voice of God. Circumcise their ears and God, I believe you're going to do something amazing. Reveal your revelation over her in Jesus' mighty name. God, we thank you, we honor you, we glorify you, worship you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So Amen. everybody Thank that you. are watching right now, I want to encourage you. Um, if you have not followed the page, Changing Crowns, you can um, uh, follow that page and you can see beautiful broadcast by Andrea and you will see a um, very encouraging broadcast. And also, if you have not followed Life Network for Women's, because you can watch Andrea over there as well. So very encouraging, beautiful broadcast, Changing Crowns. You can watch and other <laughs> ladies. And God is doing so much, Andrea, uh, you know, by you uh, in the lives of people. So before you leave, say a last word of encouragement, less than a minute. Here over to you. Oh, goodness. I'm going to say, I'm going to go back to what I said to begin with, Ephesians 3.20. It's just what God's been putting in my, um, in my face this last week and really for the last year is, you know, that he can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can think or imagine. There's nothing, like we can't even wrap our human minds around the goodness that he has. So um, Romans 8, 28, Ephesians 3, 20, that he has goodness for us and he goes above and beyond what we can think goodness even is. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Andrea Collum, all the way from Alabama. Make sure you follow, visit her page, andreacollum.com. You will be blessed, encouraged, and motivated. Thank you so much, Andrea, for coming Thank on. You. Have a beautiful night. Thank you. You're welcome. So this was Andrea all the way from Alabama with us. Yo, come on, get this uh, right now. So if you would like to follow her, please make sure to do that. And also, uh, I'm privileged to be on this broadcast tonight with you. And I want to encourage everybody, please, if you have not liked, subscribe, Vision TV, please make sure you do so you can watch more uh, shows on this uh, broadcast. It is not just only Late Night Live, but there is other many shows and encouraging words are being posted on Vision TV platform. I believe you will be blessed to read uh, uh, you know, on a Vision TV uh, word. 
So also, guys, if you have a prayer request, please feel free to send a prayer request to us. We'll be more than happy to take your prayer request. I would love to pray for you. I believe it is a time, it is a season for us to grow into the presence of God. And um, also, if you would like to pray for Vision Ministries, please do. You can pray for Vision Ministries. You can go on adnanministries.org. And you can, um, you know, submit your donations. We are currently building a 24-7 prayer center in Pakistan. And God is doing amazing, amazing things through Vision Ministries. So I want to encourage everybody, go on vision uh, adnanministries.org and you can submit your donation. If you would like to know more about Vision Ministries, you can find that on adnanministries.org. I believe it will be a blessing to connect with you. Please feel free to send me a message and stay connected. Thank you guys for coming on this broadcast and you have a beautiful night.